All right. Um, we are going to talk about real quick <clears throat> some OSD elements uh, for the DJI FPV system and how exactly to go about understanding your link quality. Um, link quality is difficult to exactly explain or, or give all the data with one specific OSD element. And, and what I mean by that is, for instance, uh, your channel seven over here uh, on the left corner uh, that says the little drone picture, four bars, and what channel you're on. Um, this link quality is sometimes misunderstood as your kind of everything rolled into one. If it goes red, you're at the edge of your range. Uh, that's not necessarily true. Uh, and this drone picture or little OSD element does signify that it's the drone. So some people also may think that it's the radio. Um, some people may think it's video. Some people think it's everything. Uh, again, depending on the system and how yours is set up and what you're running hardware wise, uh, we don't know necessarily what incorporates into that. And so <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why that indicator is just not the best indicator to use for when you're reaching your range. Now, that being said, uh, I will say that basically the way I personally treat this little monitor uh, OSD element is it is kind of my first reactionary signal to start looking at things. Um, and the way I see it is it starts to degrade and it even turns red, not when you're at its at its re reaching its peak or at its range limits, but more so it's almost like an indicator that, hey, whoa, something's happening. Like, like we're getting feedback. So I personally look at this element more of a noise meter, if you would. So when it gets noisy, it turns red. When it's not noisy, it's nice and four bars, right? Um, so that's kind of the way that I look at it. Uh, so when that thing does start to turn red, what do we look at? Uh, I know that on my screen, you see a lot of OSD elements. This was the best picture I could find to show everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, so the next element we're going to look at is one of the standard uh, goggle elements as well. And it's this 51 milliseconds and the 25.4 megabits per second. Now, these are your two best indicators of your link quality. These are really two numbers that are correlated and, and react together in a way uh, that should be, in most circumstances, uh, very linear and very uh, cause and effect based. So uh, what we know is bit rate or the megabits per second on the far right is usually either going to be 25 or 50 or should be 25 or 50. Uh, depending on your new transmission settings and what you're using. Uh, those That's the bit rate. That is basically the quality of the video, right? So the quality of the video being, being sent is basically going to be at its max transmission rate. So we know that that seems like the link quality should be good. Now, you get to the milliseconds or the latency, and this is where for this specific picture, you'll see it says low power mode. This means this drone is sitting there unarmed. Uh, so in low power mode, we still have our good 25 megabits per second, but our latency has gone up because the transmission power has been lowered. So it's still, it's still acting normally. We still have white bars on the left, so it's got great link quality. It just is simply transmitting at a low power rate. And the low power rate will cause the low latency, and, and that's intentional in low power mode, right? So if this number were, were lower, which it should be if you were not in low power mode and you were just sitting on the bench, this 51 would actually be more like 22 to 29, right? It would be fluctuating slightly in that like five to seven, num uh, five to seven range of 20-ish to, to, to right at the, the, the 29. I really hard, I don't think I've ever seen 30 milliseconds sitting on the bench. Um, and so... That's how we're going to ensure that we have solid link quality. So, so at the very beginning of our flight, we first power our drone up. We first set it down. If low power mode is on, 
Okay, that's good, that's fine. We should still have the highest megabits per second or bit rate. We should have a decent low number in the milliseconds for latency, 50 for low power mode is not horrible. Uh, but if you're getting into the 60s and 70s, well, maybe there's something going on, right? So we need to look at uh, your link quality probably is not up to par. Uh, however, uh, if you don't have low power mode or as soon as you arm, uh, you should still, again, always have that bit rate. That bit rate is your first solid foundation of a link. If that's high, you're good. Or if that's it's solid at, at its highest peak, you're good. Um, the latency will, again, be more power related to the output power level so, or any uh, uh, obstructions to the RF signal. So you go back behind a tree, you could still have 25 megabit, but you could have some latency issues because of the 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 penetration right so it again can still maybe get through and get good bit rate but it's possible that it'll uh depending on again your settings and how you have your latency settings set it could raise in in the latency while keeping your bit rate good now if you actually have uh you want low latency uh, it could actually deteriorate your bit rate slightly and then it could give you lower latency. So again, those things are going to be a little bit cause and effect depending on as one drops, the other one goes up and as one goes up, one goes down. But it's also de derived from your settings in the goggle that you set for latency uh, handling. So this is all about your priorities and, and how you have your stuff set up. But again, those things should act together, right? So we're going back to the bit rate now and and bit rate again is going to be what we talk about the most because even if we have this red over here in the left corner on the channel seven uh our first indicator should be what's the bit rate let's say that we're running i'm just going to speak in terms of 25 megabit mode because it, it it lends itself to be the easiest to understand and most people run this and have for the longest time so at 25 megabit you're good 22 23 you're good 19 you're good Around 19 is where you're going to start to see usually, especially if you have the latency protocol or priority that I have, which I have uh, latency uh, set to be low latency. So I have the priority to be I want lower latency rather than better picture. Right. Uh, so for me, as mine starts to degrade, I, I, I'm tracking also with my milliseconds. So as long as as. The, the megabits per second degrade to 19 ish. And my latency is actually, you know, again, kind of variably going up or, or not up, but down. So it's, it's maintaining a really good latency level. Well, then I know the air unit is again, handing off and prioritizing things properly. Now, if bit rate starts to drop and my milliseconds start to increase, well, that's my first indicator right away that, okay, something I, I am in a position that I'm, I'm I'm not you know getting my best signal strength or something happened maybe I hit a tree and I lost an antenna uh, something is going on though if those are both basically shooting in the negative direction so down in the megabits per second and up in the latency that means it's getting more latent and the picture is getting worse so those are the biggest indicators so Again, as I get this red blinking, I'm looking at the megabits per second. I'm watching the, you know, I'm looking at and glancing at my 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 latency. And as long as those things are still in line, I'm good. Now, I can take this all the way down to, and I have flown both air unit, full size, and Vista units all the way down to three megabits and still didn't disconnect. Uh, now, this was flying basically into a parking garage and up and through a parking garage while I'm facing the opposite way. Um, it, it was very close to probably disconnecting. Latency got through the roof at some points to like 60, 70 milliseconds. Uh, I was still able to technically fly it, obviously. Uh, and so I know that you can get we know that you can get these down with low bit rates down into the nine megabits per second, 13 megabits. You know, these are averages for like kind of mid to long range, like, hey, okay, time to start kind of thinking about coming back, right? So these are the things you really need to keep in mind are do some testing yourself, keep an eye on these numbers, always, every location is different, every person's environment, you know, RF environment is different. Um, and your drone needs to be maintained and made sure that everything's up and, and running. And again, if any of these things don't really correlate or align properly, kind of as I just discussed, 
then you may have other underlying issues. And so that's where you need to dig into, you know, your power management and, and, and antenna placement and just all the things that could be causing you other issues. So that's the DJI radio, DJI goggles setup. The last part real quick I just want to talk about is up here at the top, this 99 element, which is the RSSI. On our builds, we actually put this element directly above where the channel seven element is. Uh, and this is your Crossfire RSSI or another RSSI. But if you're getting one from us, and this is what we built, make videos for, uh, more than likely it's gonna be a Crossfire RSSI. Uh, and that being said, the element is the RSSI element. Um, the reading that we send to this element uh, when we set our drones up is actually LQ, which is link quality. And with Crossfire, uh, there's some documentation, very well documented, but just the, the nuts and bolts are this. Link quality is, again, the best way to measure totality of your link, right, of, of what's going on. So with Crossfire, it's a 300% range. 300% uh, is amazing, great, perfect. You have all the, all the range in the world, basically, that you need. Um, if you start seeing 300% to drop, it usually will drop very quickly from 300 to 100 and when it gets to 100, it's now basically kind of in, in please, if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me or, or Trappy or Mike, uh, I, I don't care. But my understanding is when it starts to drop, it starts healing itself. It starts looking for ways to mitigate any issues and continue to transmit properly. So it goes into, okay, now link quality has degraded. We're shifting some things, some packets, we're doing some things. And from 100% down to about 70 so if you go from 300 to 100, that's basically like what I was saying earlier. That's your red indicator. That's your, oh my gosh, things might be going on. There might be some noise or something interacting with my signal. I don't know. But I just went from 300 to 100, which technically you wouldn't see because we can only go to 99 on our element. So until you see 98, so the moment it changes from 99 to 98, you go, okay, that's a red flash, right? Or that's, that's my indicator. And if it immediately continues to drop and goes to 70, well, then you need to turn around and come back. Something's either not right or you're at your range limits or something. Uh, but 70 on link quality is about where you definitely should be coming home. Um, if you see anything below 99, again, you've got something going on, probably noise, something somewhere is not right because this should read 300, and from 300 to 99 is 201, and you, you have a lot of, there's no, there's no dead band there. So uh, if it goes from 300 to 100, again, there's something interacting. So again, just this is how we're gonna utilize our RSSI and our other elements to really constantly maintain and understand what our link quality looks like. Uh, hopefully at some point we'll get DGI to maybe increase this bar uh, if we could get like six to eight bars on this bar and get them a little more dynamically matched to, again, the, the link quality itself to really show what the physical link quality is uh, between your goggle and your radio. And so that's the part two is, you know, we don't it's hard to say that this is just goggle. But if radio is connected, we know radio will drop before the goggle. So at any rate, we assume this is mainly the goggle link because of the fact that we know we can drop the radio link. And when we do have the radio, we, we, we have a radio link, right? So at any rate, that, that's where we're at here. Uh, I think hopefully I've, I've made some sense or at least got you thinking about how to better understand your link quality and maintain uh, what your range is going to be. So thanks for watching. I hope that helped and didn't really just confuse you. <laughs> thanks much.